Hello and welcome to Autodesk Lead the Way virtual event. My name is Ian Matthew. I'm a technical marketing manager for Plant Solutions. And today I'm going to talk about an easier way to do plant design for engineering services supporting oil and gas and associated industries. My agenda for today is to first of all introduce you, if you are not already familiar with it, to the plant design suites, to then walk you through the engineering workflow with starting with conceptual design, moving through to detailed design, covering construction, and then operations. And then finally, we'll just do a review and have time left over for questions and answers. So let's start off with some introductions. Let's take a look at the Plant Design Suites 2013. These are available in three editions. We have the Plant Design Suite Standard 2013, the Plant Design Suite Premium 2013, and the Plant Design Suite Ultimate 2013. And these are different in the following ways. With the Standard Edition, the Standard Edition contains AutoCAD 2013, AutoCAD P&ID, Sketchbook Designer, and Showcase. The Premium Edition builds upon the Standard Edition and also includes AutoCAD Plant 3D, AutoCAD Structural Detailing, Autodesk Revit Structure, and Autodesk Navisworks Simulate. And then for the Ultimate Edition, we replace Autodesk Navisworks Simulate with Autodesk Navisworks Manage, and we also add Autodesk Inventor. And then using the Ultimate Suite, I'm going to take you through a typical engineering workflow. So the typical plant design workflow for the oil and gas and associated industries will look something like this. We'll start off with the front end engineering and design or conceptual design, move through to detailed design and engineering, and then through construction to operations and maintenance. By simplifying the design process, well, I'm going to show you how using the Autodesk tools we can start off with PNID design and regular drafting to do the process engineering, go through to 3D modeling and documentation using AutoCAD Plant 3D to do our detailed design. We'll also use Autodesk Revit Structure and AutoCAD Structural Detailing to take the structural design, engineering and detailing workflow and Autodesk Inventor will allow us to incorporate packaged equipment and skid design into our plant. And then for operations review, we can take model aggregation, review and clash detection using Autodesk Navisworks. So let's get started with conceptual design. Here we're talking about improving productivity. In a recent survey by Kambashi, a research organization based in Cambridge, England, the headline productivity gain was found to be in the region of 40% by using the AutoCAD PNID package. And this outcome was based on a rigorous and wide ranging test of AutoCAD PNID capability. So, what I'm going to do is show you how using the AutoCAD PNID package we can improve productivity for doing conceptual design. So let's take a look at the PNID. Let's start off by placing some equipment, in this case a pump. And we're just using standard AutoCAD commands here which will allow us to uh, place it. Then we'll assign a tag. In this case we'll place a secondary pump and again the tag. And now we'll go ahead and place some lines after we've mirrored the pumps. Now as we place our line notice that it automatically connects to the input. The drag maintains our orthogonality and we can assign tags as we go along and the tags have specific attributes such as size, spec, service and of course the number. Now let's go ahead and place another line here and 
Notice the break that took place. Now watch the components. Flow dependent components automatically take the direction of the line that it's sitting in. So look at these check valves. Now of course as we place our inline valves breaks automatically happen thus providing us with a great deal of drafting savings in terms of productivity. Let's change the direction of that line and notice that the check valve also changed direction. Now one of the things that we often have to do is to work with other engineers to provide information that needs to be shown on the PNID. One way you can do this is through use of Excel spreadsheets. And in this case, our pump data has come from spec sheets which have been entered into Excel spreadsheets. We import the data and the changes that have been made to the PNID are shown. We can then determine whether these are acceptable once we accept them, all the data is updated, and as you see here, so are the tags. Okay, so now let's move on to detailed design. Here we're really looking at streamlining the design workflow. We're going to do that by showing you how, with the AutoCAD Plant 3D, we have very tight integration between our conceptual design and our detail design in being able to share information between the PNID and the Plant 3D layout. In the area of structural engineering, we have a workflow that allows us to do the preliminary work, the preliminary structural layout in Plant 3D. Then we can move through to the detailed structural design and interface to analysis and with the results of that we can then move through to steel detailing and steel fabricate and produce the steel fabrication drawings. I'll also show you in, in the workflow how we can integrate between packaged equipment design and then using that design in plant layout. And then finally we'll look, take a look at how we use model aggregation for project review and we can also perform clash detection. So now let's take a look at structural modeling. First of all, we're going to start to place some columns. We use standard libraries and using the grid as you see here, we use the, the lines on the grid to actually form the guides for our columns. Now let's go ahead and show how we can trim. Simply select the columns and beams. And now we can also do some preliminary secondary steel such as a, a ladder in this case we have macros to be able to place railings here I've gone into line mode so you can see what's happening and we can go ahead and place a, grid, a, a plate over the steel so let's go back to shape mode and here is all the steel ready for further work. So now in Revit we can go ahead and import from the Plant 3D model using the SDNF format file and all the steel that we generated is now read in. We have some compatibility to make sure in terms of the sections so we just simply do the mapping between the library in one case and the other when they are not necessarily matched and we'll continue now to import the steel directly from the exported file from Plant 3D. So here is our steel structure and let's go ahead and view that in 3D and now we're ready to start doing our structural engineering on this particular structure. If we look at this in the analytical view we can work quite easily and for example add bracing and when we do the analysis we may find that we may have some secondary steel. So once we've done that from in robot we can now re-import the information back to Revit so here you see the bracing added and the, and the uh, secondary steel 
So we can do some finishing up of the steel work, in this case for example moving the bracing. Once that's done we're now ready to move across into steel detailing. So Revit automatically links directly to AutoCAD structural detailing. The members are brought in directly. So here's our structure. Now let's go ahead and place a connection. We're going to connect the beam to the column as we see here. The dialog box allows us to enter, enter the details of the actual connection. And there's our connection made. So we can examine, make sure that we have no problem areas. And now we go ahead and copy that. Then finally, we go ahead and create the uh, structural drawings and the bill of materials. So now while the structural is being done, we can go ahead and place equipment. In this case we'll place a couple of pumps. Plant3D comes with a library of parametric equipment, various different types. We select the equipment, determine the location and the orientation, and then we can copy it in this case to place a secondary pump. Update the tag for the secondary pump and we're done. Now we're going to start to do some piping. We use the PNID and select the line on the PNID that we want to work with. In this case it's line 1062. Having identified the line, we then go ahead and start placing it. In this case it's a 4 inch line connected to a 6 inch nozzle and so the reducer is placed, but we want an eccentric reducer. So we've now converted that to an eccentric reducer. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and place a OLED directly on the reducer. This is a new feature in uh, 2013. We've placed the thread OLED, we've changed the size. Now let's go ahead and add a nipple. And it's not long enough, so let's select a 3 inch nipple and finally we'll go ahead and place the gate valve and a plug. Now one of the things we may want to do is change the operator. We can do that by opening the properties, selecting the hand wheel, the operator type, selecting the type of operator that we want it to be change dimensions and now we've changed this from a hand wheel to a crank. And now let's go ahead and continue piping. So we'll place a piece of pipe and now going back to the PNID we'll go ahead and place the gate valve, place it at a 45 degree orientation and now continue piping. We're going to go up to an elevation of 7 feet 6 inches And now let's come away for another 18 inches. Now this piping configuration we want to have on the other pump, the secondary pump. So we simply select that line and go ahead and copy it. And then having copied it we then create that set and change the line number using the PNID line list to line number 1063. So now we have two lines and we can go ahead and finish the, the piping configuration. So starting at the point on the first line that we placed, we'll place an elbow and then go from the elbow to the nozzle on the vertical equipment and automatic pipe routing then steps in and we select the configuration that we want in this case. And The last thing we need to do is connect the pipe into the pipe that we just place 
as you see the T is placed automatically as we do that. So there's our line done. Let's put some supports in. We can select our support and we just simply slide along the line. The support automatically becomes part of the line. We can simply change the length by grabbing the end point. And there we've got a couple of supports on the line. So now let's go ahead and produce an isometric. The line number that we just placed is a line 1062. Our style is ANSI C, a check, P and I, a check isometric. And here's the isometric that we've just created. As you see, there's the uh, OLED on the eccentric reducer. There's the support, and we have our bill of materials over in the top right. Now often we use packaged equipment or skid units. These may be designed separately, externally, and use mechanical design systems such as Inventor. If it's used in Inventor, one of the things that we want to do is use the design as we were given it, but reduce its complexity. So we do that as a process called shrink wrapping. By taking the original model, we can make it less complex and we can add connections. So for example here, we need to connect the piping. So we have intelligent piping points. They have a size, in this case eight inches, and a reason. And now we go ahead and reduce the, salt mo the model size by using a process called shrink wrapping. And then finally we'll create it as an external file using the uh, BIM exchange format. Now this file can be imported directly into our plant 3D. We use the import command, select the file that we just created, and now we place it as a piece of equipment in the location we want, orientate it the direction we want, determine the class, and we can assign a tag to it. The other thing we can do is examine our nozzles. In this case, the original design was done in metric, so it pulled over the metric units, but the size was 8 inches. Now our endpoints are butt-welded nozzles, and so given the tag for the line, we now go ahead and place the line from the rack and connect it in, as you see here. Now let's take a look at reviewing the project. First of all, let's do some clash detection. In, in, in Navisworks, we have the clash detective, which allows us to identify and review the clashes. And at any stage, we can then switch back, back to the model in order to fix them. So now let's take a look at construction. In construction we're particularly concerned about reducing waste. So one of the things that we can do using Navisworks in the plant design suite is to plan our construction while we're doing the design. In the new 2013 Navisworks we have cost estimation as an added feature. So now here we are back in Navisworks this time we're going to use the Timeliner command to actually create and demonstrate how we can show a construction sequence. We've used data sets that came from the model and assigned particular tasks to them and date uh, for start and finish. And then we play this back in Timeliner which shows us then our design sequence. Interactively we can move around and determine whether to change our sequence. 
And finally, let's move into the operations and maintenance phase of the facility. In particular, let's look at compliance. We can use the intelligent information that's held behind the PNID to ease compliance. One example for this may be the use of our PNIDs to assist in leakage detection and repair, otherwise known as LDAR. In this area, we're looking at compliance monitoring via the use of intelligent PNIDs connected to an LDAR database. What's particularly important is that we only need to monitor those particular components that need to be monitored. And which of those should that be? There are millions of valves in any particular refinery. Of course, the other thing that we need to know is that we in ensure that we don't miss those that should be monitored. So let's look at how, by partnering with Environmental Intellect, AutoCAD PNID can link to the LDAR database. So here's a PNID that's been linked to the LDAR database. We can show the, the stream associations by color on the PNID, or we can go and determine or show the classifications. In this case, the green indicates is light liquid and is subject to LDAR review. We can now go into the database, look at the stream that's associated, and examine the stream information in the LDAR database. Now we could do some things like override. So for example, we might want to override this particular line as it would be classified differently. Now going back to the PNID, if we then look at it, we'll see that now it's been changed from light liquid to heavy liquid, highlighted in blue. So now let's review what we've done in the last 15 minutes or so. We've covered through the Autodesk plant design suites the workflow for oil and gas plant design. We've covered tools that allow us to do construction planning and I've also shown you some of the tools that we offer in association with our third parties to assist in regulatory compliance during the plant operation. So with that I'd like to thank you. We've got time for uh, questions and answers and if you want to learn more please visit our Plant Solution Center at this event or for more information you can go to www.autodesk.com slash plant design suite all one word. Thank you.